You saw Cargo, you saw Bolden, Gray, Pendergraft, and Sacre join them in the red zone. This game brought to you in HDTV by HP. Davidson in the red. Billy, you watched both of them practice yesterday, and you were impressed by what you saw. Uh, really better athletes than you'd expect from two schools, although Gonzaga's had a tremendous record over a long number of years. Tom McKillop has put together the same kind of program at Davidson. This Gonzaga team now with the first possession, 10th consecutive year in the NCAA tournament. Only the second time, though, in those 10 years that they had to leave the West bracket. Bolden and Curry head to head against each other. They were teammates last year the night team and under. Bolden bigger, stronger, played right over Curry on that first possession. And they were not only teammates, they were roommates. Bolden and Curry. Now in the front court, Richard. Is it over here to the far side to that day? You see, there's a different change down there. Gray is on Curry. Curry is facing the top defensive players in the country this year. And still is going to get his shots off. A turnover committed by the Wildcats. Bob McKillop, seven times the Southern Conference Coach of the Year, and this is the fifth time he's directed Davidson College to the NCAA Tournament. Has yet to win one, though, Jim. And has, as I said, put together a great program here that's taken some top teams this year right to the wire. North Carolina, Duke, UCLA. That's a three by Stephen Gray, the freshman. And here he is, Gray down the corner with Curry. Let's see if they can do something with the Curry opener. Nice screen from the backside. Curry doesn't come off quickly. Now yeah, start for Gonzaga. Five on the board before Davidson takes his first shot. Here is Curry. And he hits. He has a high arcing jump shot. Nice back screen, and Curry took it back door. That goes Sander. And Sacre takes advantage. Sacre not going to put a lot of points on the board. Sander fell down. Obviously, no defense left. Both teams playing straight up man to man defense. Sleep on that Jim. He thought he was going to have a situation where Lovedale was going to be a screener instead of a cutter. Tough pass. Pendergraft pulls it down. That's Lovedale almost forcing the turnover. Mark Few in his ninth year at Gonzaga. Again, every year he's been on that bench. He's taken the Bulldogs to the tournament. There's a seven-time coach of the year. It's caught. Ray gets another open look. And he's now knocked down two from behind the arc. A switch of defensive assignments. Curry not doing a good job beating this man to the spot. Richards on the drive. And see why he's off conference. Kind of surprised me a little bit there that Cargo let him go by. Cargo strong and quick. And he travels. Cargo. <laughs> Davidson win streak again at 22. Carolina, UCLA, Wisconsin, all at 11. We'll have the Tar Heels on this floor tonight against Mount St. Mary's. Then they've won 36 in a row in conference, in the Southern Conference. Morris Minow, the first sub in for Davidson, replacing Thomas Sander. So Minow and Lovedale both on the floor right now. Here's some extra power and a rebound for Davidson. And a miss shot in this game. Gonzalez hit its first four. Davidson its first three. About how relaxed Curry is on the floor. He doesn't worry about getting that ball to the last minute. Lovedale too long with the shot. And that's pulled down by Gonzaga. I think Lovedale should have waited one more second because Curry had beaten his man and left off that screen. That was Cusso with the rebound who's come in for the Bulldogs. Nice defense by Leno. Gray off to a good start. Now. Gray defending and he helps first the turnover. Jim, I realize he's known for his offense, but that time Curry did a really good job moving his feet against Gray. He started hot. Richards out here. He's almost 35 points a game, so don't expect him to come out. Off the screen. Up there. Keeps it alive. Good look for Curry right now. 
Had a big game against Duke this year. It's Davidson team playing a, a Gonzaga-like schedule in the conference. North Carolina, Duke, UCLA. And they didn't beat them, but they played them all close. And that was his 258 assists on the year. Mm. Pretty strong, huh? He runs in the family. His father was an assist man for that. Twenty three guys in the history of college basketball. A thousand eight assists. Two fifty a year. Day in the game now. And this time was for a shot. I'm saying Richard's father, Tom, was a point guard, the leading assist man for the Pitt Panthers. As Tom Richards back in that '74 season, they played NC State in that memorable NCAA tournament. And David Thompson took the fall. And is that guy being Jim broadcasting that game? And Maybe as this one goes on, we can talk about that moment a little bit. Day, and banking it in. Day, nice soft shooter, just like his father, who was an outstanding player for UCLA. Darren Day, and the 1980 NCAA finalist team, Lovedale, no, tipped out, back to Lovedale. Behind the back pass by Lovedale, so he's showing us a little bit of everything today, other than what you would expect. Set some solid screens. Baseline shot. Drops for Stephen Curry. You cannot give him that much room. And what's happening right now is that nobody's helping out when he's going through those screens. You can't expect Curry to stay up with it. <laughs> what a pass. He's trying to check it by Lockdale. Great. Curry time hits a three. Beautiful. He's on that shot. Oh. And it's a block call. And Gonzaga against Gray. Been great shooting, 44% on the year from three. So not surprising, good drive. That'll send Max Paulus Gosselin, junior from Quebec, to the international roster at Davidson, isn't it, Billy? Well, they uh, have six international players on this team. Florida International also has six, so the most in college basketball. Talking about players from Quebec, Canada. Nigeria, France, Turkey. Jim, there are 405 international players this year in Division I alone. Colonial Conference leads with 25. And what, you know, it's interesting. The country that leads is Canada with 65 kids that have played college basketball this year in Division I teams. It's actually ball in the game for David's 22 to 10. Steven Rossiter also sitting for his action 23. Also go on cargo right now. He's got the size. Freshman, freshman, day. Short. up, and Rossiter has it. It's going the other way. Back to Davidson. Puso on the push. Curry's doing a nice all around job there. We know him as an outstanding scorer. He is fifth in the nation, but he's doing a good job. That was a good tap out rebound on his part. He's doing a solid defensive job, and now we have him being guarded by Downs, who's got him by about, what, five inches. That's good, 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 good. 22, first action for the Zags. Kansas. They're trying a little bit of everything, but the Curry has seen all kinds of defenses, as well as individual players that have guarded him. Curry. Advantage and knocks it down from three. Jim, I said it before, you're not going to stop him by having one man try to stay with him. He's got to get some help there, just as you would double down in the post. You've got to double on the outside of the perimeter. That's a travel on downs. 
Talk about that non-conference schedule for Davidson College, including the game against North Carolina. Played in Charlotte. Carolina beat it by four. Then against Duke, another game in Charlotte. It's a six-point win by the Blue Devils. Traveled out to Anaheim to play UCLA in early December. Lost the game by 12, but that's able to see it. It is. They had him 32 to 14 at that point in the first half. We know what the great defense that UCLA can play. Westbrook, uh, Russell Westbrook did a pretty good job on trying to hold him to 15 in that game. Westbrook, one of the top defenders in the country. That defense last night at UCLA surrendered only 29 points in its opening round run. Pass went right through the fingertips of Sanders. Sanders should have caught that ball in an easy layup. I expected Cargo to start making some moves to cut on the inside. So far, Ricky has done a fine job on it. They work it inside to Heitfeld. And it stays with the Zags. Jim, we know about Heifeld's problems off the court. They've been well documented. But in terms of the way he has come back, he's still not comfortable on that foot. Uh, I thought when I first saw him play, the Zag uniform, he was going to be one of those really great players. It still can happen, but he's not the player that he was. Turned over into the arms of Richards. Mason a ball and a run blocked by Heitzfeld. Boulder with the rebound and the reach in on Rossiter. There goes what I was talking about, Heitzfeld. Look at that running and the speed. He got all the way down court. Ran right with the guard. Perfect block as he dropped it on the board. That ball was on the way up. Nice piece of official. And Davidson brings in yet another sub, Brian Barr, sophomore from Falmouth, Maine. So one of the things about these two programs as well are they, they, they move themselves up to the upper echelon of basketball. The bench would normally be in these kind of teams kind of weak. Right now they bring in fine athletes who can really play eight, nine deep. And uh, that's the difference between where they maybe used to be five or six years ago and where they are now. First foul on Richards. Now, speaking got, of Davidson, you, you, can see it. you can see the depth. Yep. As Davidson really wants to do what Gonzaga has been doing. That Absolutely. is to become a you know, regular NCAA participant. They are somewhat bad right now, but they, want to, they need to win a game to get to that Gonzaga. Well, you have Gonzaga underneath the Pac-10 for so many years. Yep. Davidson under the ACC for so many years. But both of these teams have risen right up there with them. This is what I expected from Gonzaga. And he scores for the first time in this game. He's been too quiet. Gonzaga's going to go ahead and take over this game. He's got to start making it into some really good defensive games. Underneath with the board, it's Downs. Take over this ball game. Second leading score on this team, but we've seen him have explosive games in his career. We'll get you back to Raleigh in just a moment. Let's check into Tampa first, where Western Kentucky and Drake have about 13 and a half minutes to play. Five point lead for Drake. Seth, you were talking about tempo in this game. Yeah, well, it's both of these teams like to get up and down. Both of them can score a lot of points. I think they're very evenly matched. Drake came out a little bit skittish at the start, maybe a little bit too hyped up. They settled back into their offense. They've gotten a couple of nice buckets from Jonathan Cox. And Leonard Houston is a very athletic guard who I think uh, would be a factor if it continues to be an open court game. And I think it will be. And one of the things that people don't really note about Drake is the way this team plays defense. They don't play a lot of man-to-man. -man. They play a lot of zone matchup stuff, but they're very much in sync. They're aggressive. They're active with their hands, and it creates trouble for the opponent, and that allows them on occasion to get out into the open court where they take advantage of the three-point line. Here you get a look at it here. Good long three. Nice look. Was that um, Brazelton? Brazelton. Tyrone Brazelton from three feet behind the three-point line there. All right, in Little Rock. St. Mary's and Miami, and uh, right now this is a one-point game. St. Mary's had the early edge. Miami's been able to edge back. I really think Miami has an advantage inside. Their top two scores are guys that play on the perimeter, James Dews and um, McClintock, but inside they've got a number of guys, Collins and King and Graham, that I think can wear down the St. Mary's front line. Miami's on a 7-0 run right now and uh, not shooting it particularly well, but I do agree with you, Clark, in terms of their inside advantage. Uh, against Diamond Simpson and Omar Samhan. That's Simpson with the ball now for St. Mary's. St. Mary's needs to get out 
to make it an open court game. If Miami can control the pace a little bit, then they can use their size advantage inside. That'll be a key. That's now a tie game. And in Birmingham, American and Tennessee. And Bruce Pearl has had a couple of early timeouts to talk to his team. They're up by just three points. Well, they've been getting pounded on the offensive glass. American has 10 offensive rebounds. Tennessee averages 14 offensive rebounds a game, has none so far here today. All right, 21-17 Tennessee in the lead. We'll keep tabs for you. Let's get you back to Raleigh once again and rejoin Jim Nance and Billy Packer. We've had a basket made here by Davidson's Lovedale. It's 20 to 17 to Zags. Let's go. Tight back with the putback. Grand big front line out on the floor right now for the inside of the high day. That's long by Brian Barr, who can fire the three. He's had some huge games from the outside. Dre, those have to go right now. I like the lineup on the floor. Mark Few has put a nice job. He's rotated players, but he's got a nice lineup on the floor. Stephen Gray has hit four threes. He has come out on fire to look at the three. Got excellent range, great follow-through. This gets on the team shooting as a team. 37% for three, but they're getting the ball in the hands of the right people today, and I love this lineup. It's a big lineup on the floor right now with a front line with Heifeld in the center. And Day and Downs, two wide guys that play very long. Those long arms in there, so this is a tough matchup for Davidson right now. We talked about Gray missing that early option. He had missed surgery on but he is uh, certainly found his groove here late in the year. Nice, nice move here, Jim. A 1 2 2 zone, but Downs up in the top of those long arms. Very hard to find an opening here. Davidson wasn't facing. Last touch by Gonzaga. That was Paul Wisconsin and short of a shot. Against this 1 2 2 zone, if they stay in the zone, well, hey, Davidson well, has well, to be patient well, enough to well, carry some looks. Josh, get on, Curry. Get on, Curry, Josh. Hey, hey, hey. It's really nice to have a 6 foot 9 guy with long arms at the top of a 1 2 2 zone. It takes up a lot of space. an AT&T Naismith watch update coming up on AT&T at the half. With Bolden in the ball game right now with a five-second count. Bolden back in the ball game. Pargo sits down, but they keep that big, wide front line in the ball game. Let's see if they stay in the zone. They do. One, two, two, and there's Downs out on top. John Mark! Davidson's missed his last five shots. Down 11. Very strong in the ball game. Richard sits in with the two fouls. He only had 48 fouls. 
He has a very high arc on his shot. And even though Downs was right there with those long arms playing about six foot ten, he was able to get it over the top. You ever seen a softer three? That's pretty good. Beautiful. That's a nice reach for Day to turn it over. You know, when you get a guy that can score and shoot like Curry, one of the things that I don't think that Gonzaga is doing a good enough job is is not making him play defense. Try to wear him down when he's guarding. That beautiful shot. And he's got Dell who played a couple of NCAA times. On the drive. And tipped in by Lovedale. Gosselin, Paul Gosselin had missed, but Lovedale having a good half. He sure is. That's both ends of the floor. He double teams out front. Nice job. Archambeau with the steal. Both the defender. Archambeau lays it out. Gave it with a fake to freeze the defender. Taylor Lovedale did a tremendous job on that step back double team. Timeout that's the way it ought to be played. Davidson, seven points right out of the last break, unanswered. When uh, UNLV beat Kent State, and there you see Dell and Sonia Curry. Pretty good stroke that he had. Nice comeback by Bolden. Bolden taking for a hate back. Good job to get Cargo back in this ballgame. And Ray is just having shooting practice here. Well, that's his first miss. He made his first foul from outside. You saw who was guarding there. Lovedale was out. A little tougher to shoot over Lovedale than it has been true. And Bolden pulled out. Strong. Pendergraft keeps it alive for the Zags. Boy, Lovedale, I love the way he sits down defensively. It makes no difference who he's guarding, a big man or small. He has really been a stop. This Marco, he wanted the shot. And it's Lovedale for Davidson. Lovedale's a turnaround. He's a little bit tired right now. He's taking his time coming down. It's Archambeau missing on the baseline. Nice grab by Cargo to push it up the court quickly. Heitfeld fires the three. He's got that shot. Okay, two evenly matched clubs out here. Really are. You, yeah, we felt that yesterday watching them practice it. They're deep, they're well drilled, they've very got similar. good athletes. Yep. Reach in coming up. Now you have Cargo coming to, on a little bit of a double down. Heifel hit him from the back. Sander, man, it's got to hurt a little bit. It's the first on Heitfeld. You know, when you, when you take a look at Gonzaga and their history, they went 37 years in Division I before they got in an NCAA tournament. That was in 95, but 99, 2000, 01, 02, 03, 05, 07. I mean, they have been there as a regular customer. Richards back in the game. He hits the three. Twenty-seven Gonzaga here in Raleigh. It's Richards out Gray right now. Gray's at the hot hand. Let's see if they get it to him. Gosselin an opening. Long with the shot. Paulus Gosselin pulls it out. Now Richards serving, driving, puts it up. Heitfeld sweeps it away. Then I thought he should have gone with the left hand on that layup. Assist by Bolden. And there was the left hand. Pretty good catch by Pendergrass. Tough pass. <laughs> fires it inside the middle. Pendergrass behind him. And he's going to be called for the foul. Gonzaga's hit seven threes, most of them by Gray. And they lead. Gonzaga has never trailed in this game. Biggest lead, 11. 
with the Davidson ball down six. Remember last time Richardson took the ball out of bounds, he made a direct pass to a layup. Oh, up and Cargo going to chase after him. Look at that speed. Good recovery by Davidson. It's great. With one shot. This is last two after five minutes. Pusso. Almost a three-point opportunity. CBSSports.com covers every minute of the madness. Get expert analysis, watch highlights, buzzer beaters, live scoring and stats for every game, all at CBSSports.com. Rossiter with his second foul, and Abdullah Cuso is at the line for two. Young man originally signed with Rutgers, went to Tallahassee Community College. Big game against Virginia Tech this year, 19 points and 10 rebounds. You look over this entire lineup, I'm part of both of these teams, and guys have had 15 plus points just about all up and down the lineup. They all have the ability to yep. come up with the big game. Absolutely, in different ways. So he has one of two. Three and a half to go, first half. Three out of three. He's so just becoming a different side to score on this one. The second one on David Pendergraft. That was an unnecessary foul there, Jim, because Richards really had squared up very well on that shot. You see him turn on this shot. He's not three really shot. squared three. up. You can see that foot had to twist before he released the shot. Very seldom you're going to make one from that distance. Davidson Billy this season 20 and 0 in all league play. Then you look over on Gonzaga's side. Two. Three teams out of its conference make the NCAA tournament field. St. Mary's is in action right now against Miami, Florida. And later this afternoon, San Diego meets UConn. Well, when you think of conferences yesterday, the Big East 4 0, the Big Ten 3 0, Purdue, Michigan State, Wisconsin. One. Hey, Pac 10 lost two teams yesterday, Arizona and Southern Cal. Good. One. Terrific job on that in the first half. Curry, because of his great shooting ability and perfect technique, is almost always squared up. But they come off of these solid screens. Here comes one. And a push outside Pargo. You know, Richards doesn't look like he's that fast or explosive, but he's a lot stronger than you give him credit for and really clever with the basketball. He's been going by Pargo. Almost at will here, and that surprises me because I thought Parker would have the upper hand with quickness. We're talking about it earlier, Billy. Jason Richards' father, Tom, led Pitt 
He just sits back and he's right, but that's the front end of the one and run. There he is. I was on that Billy Knight team, and we talked about that. David Thompson in that game, you know, I'll never forget it. He was fouled down in the corner and he ran down the floor. For people to imagine, he hit Phil Spencer. He was so high in the air, he hit Phil Spencer's shoulder. It turned him right upside down. He came down on the back of his head and laid motionless on the floor. I, I thought we'd never see him play basketball again. They took him from the floor. It was and he returned that day. It was unbelievable. When he came back into the building. Just a electric high foul. He's had a couple of putbacks. And just think a week later, he goes to Greensboro. And North Carolina State ends the tremendous UCLA run. And that was Tracy Richards' father that was the back in for Gonzaga for Heitfeld. Mark Few kind of agrees with me as well. Why wasn't that a good back screen? I mean, it was physical, but I thought it was legal. Last minute and a half. He's been a good one here Raleigh. Curry. Day taps it over to his teammate, Puso. Right now, I think because of the depth, Gonzaga's pressure to go right here, particularly in two positions. Curry, of course, has played the whole half. He's never come out. Richard's got a slight blow. Lovedale, uh, Ben Irving right there. He has put out tremendous energy in this first half. Seven seconds spread on the pass. He's hitting the shot clock. Got to go ready to go. It's a good solid spot. Drops it to the other side. Oh, the knockdown. Beautiful shot by Jermaine's. Richards with a three. Two seconds in that half. Gonzaga will go to the locker room with the lead. Another bad shot right there. I'm telling you, I had to hold my breath for a minute. The 24 hour Comic Sports Channel from CBS Sports. And Jim Ben scoring in that first half. Gonzaga with a 15 2 lead in that regard. That and three point shooting has given them their lead. That's including Heitfeld's contributions with seven points. And five rebounds and a block off the bench. The other thing I ought to point out is that Gonzaga has really been turning the ball over quite a bit. 18 assists and 31 turnovers in the two previous games. And they have that first half, only eight assists and 12 turnovers. Something they're going to have to cut down. The winner of this one advancing to round two. We're going to meet up with the winner of Georgetown and UNBC, which will be next up on this floor in Raleigh. Way back on Curry. Curry a little bit can't get for, ask for a better look, and he hits the three right out of the locker room. He plays under safe, such great control without the ball. He's right there reaching in. I don't think if you're Fennegraff, you want to be dribbling that ball out there with Lovedale. Give it up, go set a screen somewhere. Lovedale just too quick for him. And that's a second foul on Lovedale. On the floor to start this second half. Over the has been extremely quiet in this ball game. They need him to pick it up. There he is. Nice double down. He's going to have to be just like he started the game. That's his sixth three of the day. Jim, I'd have to say, why would you double down on Bolden who hasn't done much, which left Ray wide open for the jumper? And he's been the man. Questionable defensive move by Davidson. Last touch by Gonzaga. That's the first field goal made since the 8-17 uh, mark left in the first half by Stephen Gray, but he has been a sharpshooter, six of them in all. Hey, you've got to think about what, what happens when you double down on somebody as hot as Gray has been. 
18 points for Brett ties a career high. Curry's got another one. And Jim, watch his feet. Now that was a very difficult position to get yourself into to be able to get that shot off, but he squares up those feet. Beautiful. Quick release. Curry now with 16. As I said, he had seven threes when he played here against NC State earlier this year. He likes the court. He lost by only one here to the court pack. So Gray on Curry, Curry on Gray. Sander back on the floor. And it's another outside shot. Pentagram. Shooting 44% from three, so not surprising. Nice split. Yeah, split right between them, and that drew the foul. Jim, here's what, I'm, here's what I'm talking about. Watch his feet square up to the basket. See them turn? He turns them, he gets squared up right away on that jump shot. Terrific job on his part. And he's going against the flow right there, a right-handed shooter going left and still squares up. Terrific move on his part. That last uh, foul actually was on Pentergraf, and that's his third. Same play. Sander trying to save it. Last touch by Pentagraph. Sander, we mentioned in that first half, that was the jam thumb. Went to the locker room. It's all bandaged now, but he's playing. And did not scratch in the first half. No points, no rebounds. He really has that heavily taped up. You know it has to affect him. It's in his right hand, too. What the officials are trying to do right now, did the ball hit the rim or not? They're going back and readjust the clock. The shot clock uh, says 18 right now. If it touched the rim, they're going to give them the fresh 35, but they've determined, uh, I guess, it stays at 18. Determined it didn't touch the rim. Boy, I thought Richard was open for the layup there on the first cut to the basket. Golden. Curry. He's been making drives to the basket throughout this game. That's a palming violation. <laughs> he cannot believe it. Doesn't complain. Drive that ball right through the guy, Joe Henderson, did last night. And that two point take it right on through the defense. For the winning basket. Pinnacap. That's Curry scoring for that one. And that was a pounding violation right there by Curry. That little hesitation dribble. Pulls up and aspires on the two. The team doing much of getting the ball down inside. Holden smartly waited on the defense to come in. Yields an easy basket. That hands. Nino. Now to think about it. Nino on the move. He's not a fish that's going to catch that. Got it. Yes, as I said, well, not, not good hands. And as a passer, you've got to understand who's going to be the catcher. Not going inside. Behind, it's not so it's going to be whistled for. NCAA March Madness on demand is streaming every game from the NCAA basketball tournament online for free. You can watch any game anytime at the new NCAA.com. Check it out. It's the first foul on Collis Gosselin since Cargo to the line for two. The West Coast Conference Player of the Year. Three subs coming in for Davidson, Archambault, Ludale's back. With Congo on the line, Jim, just think about these games with these tough opponents. You have 23 against Connecticut, 28 against Oklahoma, 25 against Memphis. Pretty good line. 25 points, two rebounds, seven assists against the teams that we know to also back in the floor for the Wildcats as Hype felt. He's very productive in that first half because I was also out there. Richard throws the foul on the drive. He 
has been able to blow right by Gonzaga players today, particularly Pargo, who should be moving those feet staying in front of him. Pargo second. Again, Gonzaga has never trailed in this game. Biggest lead, 11. Adjustment. Unbelievable. Watch this. Moves it to the left hand. Uses his shoulder to boot the defender. Terrific play. He'll have a free throw to boot after the break. Even when he doesn't have like the perfect shot. So he's both. Yeah, he's got the combo. Yep. So he's gonna have a free throw. Three-point play. He has scored eight of Davidson's nine in the second half. What I like about this young guy is that he hasn't taken a bad shot today, although he's heavily guarded. It's a free throw, though. It's a bigger lineup now for Gonzaga. Heinz Ball was successful for him in the first half. Puts it out. What a shot put action for Heinz Ball. the largest lead, Archibald. No. Archibald has taken some quick shots in this game with nobody underneath if he misses. So far, he's been missing. Way on the ball. Dangerous time for Davidson right now. He's having total control. Davidson and their tremendous run left the Brazil, took this program, and it had gone nowhere. Chance to block the shot. Puts an outstanding free throw shooter on the line. Good steal by Kerr. Not in good position defensively, and yet picks up the cheap foul. Should have stayed away from it. We were talking about the uh, Lefty Drizel days at uh, Davidson. Back to back years. Some that don't know the history of it might be surprised to know in the late 60s, Davidson. Consecutive years bigger than a game of going to the final four. North Carolina knocked him out three to the final four times. That's right. One of Lefty's major recruiting losses, Charlie Scott, who became the first in North Carolina, beating at the, at the buzzer. Mike Moore, the biggest player out of New York, all American player. Actually, Mike Moore's team was ranked number one preseason. It's hard to believe that in the nation with a school like Davidson could be preseason number one. There's some of the other players, Fred Hetzel, uh, Fred Terry Hetzel, Holland. Yeah, Fred was, uh, Terry was the first recruit that Lefty ever had. Fred Hetzel was the first really big time recruit that he had. Both of them uh, set Lefty up. Uh, 
with a tremendous program at Davidson. Davidson just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Just a short trip here. Meanwhile, Gonzaga had a four-hour flight, three time zones away. This is a uh, game that clipped effectively at 9.25 in the morning on their body clocks. How about that hustle by Ruff there? Got back in time. The day is two for nine the And that ball back into the arms of the Zags. Tough spot down in the corner, nowhere to go. Timeout called nice. by a Coach Few. It's an eight point Gonzaga lead just inside 14 minutes to play in Raleigh. We're back here in Raleigh. And Gonzaga's led throughout. There's been most of the time a lead really between five and 11 point spread. Currently at eight. That was a nice timeout by Mark Hughes. He had a lot of time left on the clock. His team totally disorganized. You get that one possession back. They've got a nice working margin in this ball game right here. You want to see somebody take a bad shot. Shot clock. Marshall Bowl depending on both of them. Baseline with advantage. Okay, the opponent does a nice job with those pockets. He moves the ball, he moves his head, he moves his eyes. Tough to get. Oh, right back with a three. He got it done. He, had, he doesn't need much room to get it off. There wasn't a lot of room there. A little congested, but he still fires the perfect three. Outstanding post play. Archibald whistled for that one. So many people are used to doubling down on a post man, but not many teams are used to doubling up on a perimeter player. But when screens are set, that screener might as well stay with him to help out the man that's guarding him because he needs very little room to get his shot off. Paul's Gosselin back in for the Wildcats. Curry has scored the last eight for Davidson. Cargo strong. It's day, the Lovedale defending. Not like Lovedale in that matchup. Day has not had a good day from the floor. But Lovedale is just so quick. He sits down on big guys in small light. Having a terrific game. Richards. That's a fish off call against Garganius. Ganius is first. Richard's done a fine job, Jim. Those two fouls he picked up about halfway through the first half. Now he's got three. But uh, he's playing a lot of minutes out here and not getting into further trouble. Nice cut. Here we go, back out high. Looking around, Richard. He's this kid's amazing. That shot is so soft. I tell you what, Phil Davis is better. He's not going to miss many. What a drag. Bradley's call for the charge. Crowd on its feet here in Raleigh. Stephen Curry has scored the last 11 for Davidson. His mother celebrating. They come back from 11 down to within four. So what he's going to say about his shot? He's going to make the most of it. An offensive rebound. And, he's going to and a whistle. If he, if he misses a shot, it goes up there so soft that there's going to be great opportunities for offensive rebounds. Near the end of this game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution. To each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy in American Revolution. So I love that in that first half, Billy. At 8.7 rebounds, been uh, a little quiet here in the second stanza. And played great defense in the first half, no matter who he was matched up with. He's doing the same here. Davidson has a team, shoots 72% from the line. Up there, just a little bit under that at 69%. It's quite a comeback by Davidson. Curry leading the way. Long pass. Oh, that. that was Gray setting him up from midcourt. Gray just nothing shooting wise in the first half. That was a perfect pass. Yeah. 
taste and zero calories when a $25,000 scholarship from Coke Zero at MyCokeRewards.com. So Lovedale with four. That's a huge foul, Jim. 8.56 to go. Next to Curry, he's one of the best players that the Davidson's got on the floor today. He's been so valuable in so many areas. He's got a set. They bring in Minnow. Minnow and take out two more experienced players. Sander and Lovedale. Mike Felt, who had a big game a year ago in the preseason of night team, and they beat North Carolina against Tyler Hansborough and had a big game. That was one of Hansborough's lowest 
production games of his career. Once again, where Gonzaga leads Davidson by one. Jim Nance, Billy Packer. Cargo hits the front end of the one and one, but misses the second. So it's a one point lead for Gonzaga with six minutes remaining. Into the zone, I was waiting for this defense to come back, and I thought they'd come back with the big people playing this home. Not this time, but tip down. Was Paulus Gosselin keeping it alive at the Richards? Jim, I know Paulus Gosselin hasn't done much offensively, but he has really played some great D and has gotten on the boards. Sanders, open. And he's got that bandage all over the right wrist. They're probably injured in the first half. The best smaller team on the floor playing this zone right now than what Gonzaga had in the first half, and they employed it so well in the first half with bigs out front. The 10 of the shot clock. Richards goes to three. Plucked out of the air by Parko. Paulus Goslin 
Again, Ryan Barber. That's quite a task. He's been up to the moment so far. Franklin ahead. And the ball is Sasslin. Knocking it out of bounds. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Gonzaga down by midcourt. Sasslin, a hard nosed defender with good anticipating skills. High this year, nine points. But you can see why he's on the floor. Lovedale's back on the floor, Billy, with the four fouls for Davidson. And that's worth the game, but 4.59 to go. Holding in bounds to Pendergraft. Can't be reaching right now, I'm trying to get to it. Steal the ball. Lovedale oh, has the floor. Oh, the shot clock. In the hands of Carter, conference player of the year. Curry defense. Steps back to the floor. Rebound Rossiter. Four. That's two now. Players for Coach McKillop with four fouls. Rossiter and Lovedale. Jim, I had last play, Paulus Gosselin. He thought that Curry was going to break to the basket, and he never came. That's why he threw it away. Well, that last call for late was on Richards. So, Chicago. Richards now has four, not Rossiter. Richards and Lovedale. And Richards, as I said earlier, only committed 48 fouls on the whole year. Playing over 35 minutes a game has not fouled out of a game this year. He's got the score in the floor for Davidson. Gonzaga is a team only five of ten from the line. Cardo one of two. Two point lead for the Bulldogs. And they stay in the zone, but again, I think the zone is more effective for their big team on the floor. Look at how far they're extending the zone out on third. like a rope. Had no chance to go. Puts Davidson up one. Harris guys are trying to keep the ball out of the corner. Oh! Left hand pulls it away. The 10 seed Davidson. Seven seed Don Savage. Good and great one. I think Davidson likes to go against this zone with the smaller team out front. Now with a bigger team back out there. Still staying in the 
zone. Set a screen. Rodgers now with five. Five I think he threw that up there thinking Lefty might be able to get it off the board. He definitely went for a pass and shot. That's a hard at 74. That's the play that they needed on the last possession as well. Marzo with 11 in his half, 16 on the game. He's got to keep the ball in his hands on the offensive end of the floor. and its first NCAA tournament win since 1969. Well, if you're part of it, as I said, Jim, get that ball and drive it the length of the floor. That last time out there, it was actually Gonzaga's for out of timeouts. Nice job by Richard Cohen. That play was coming for the shot. No, short. Gary tips it around and a whistle first. I think it's going to be on Sander over days back. Yes, it is. It's a couple bonus. They just had too much size for him in that pack. They have to shoot two. Day from the field today has had a rough go of it. Yeah, but he's an 89% free throw shooter, Jim. He's the leader of the 13th in the field. Let's see what he does here at the line. Oh, he's not it up. What a long streak of successful free throws. 29 in a row at one point during the season. 89 of 100 he had made coming into this game. Rossiter comes in. For Sander. Big blocking out of the assignments right here for Davis. Puzo comes in for Gonzaga. 23 seconds remaining. Gonzaga only 6 of 12 from the line. Oh, somebody in the lane. Who is it? Well, 
looks like maybe they felt that Cuso got pushed. No, they're going to give the ball to Davidson. Cuso in the line, in the lane. Cuso had just checked in with a lane violation. Big mistake there. players of the game, Curry and Gray. Jim, you know what's interesting, too, about Curry? You hear it, so many outstanding recruits. Here's a young man that uh, Roy Williams, uh, I, I think, said, hey, we just missed on this guy. You know, coming out of high school, not recruited by ACC schools. And here he is, one of the premier players in the country, without question. Steps to the line, 89%. Tournament games got knocked out in the first round each time. The son about to do something 14 seconds away from doing something he was never able to do win a game in the tournament. Those games at Virginia Tech where he is not in their Hall of Fame. Last seven points have gone to Davidson after this. That's a foul against Davidson. 9.7 seconds to go. And if you are Paulus Gosselin, you do not want to commit that foul. Let him have the two points. Keep the clock moving. We'll bring in Rossiter, Davidson, Twill, and Bryant Barr after the first free throw. The game again is tied 74, Billy. I think Curry hit that three. The last seven points to Davidson until a couple right there breaks the stretch. Jimmy, another thing that amazed me about this Davidson team, as I said at the end of the first half, they seemed like they were really tired. You take into consideration, I don't believe Curry's been out in the second half. And, and he only was out one minute in the first half. He looks like he's just uh, playing nice and cool out here. Brings it down to five with about 10 seconds left. You start playing 39 minutes against the defense coming at you like this and shooting the way he is, that's really amazing. to the line for two. Uh, nice move by Bob McKillop there. Send your best free throw shooter right into the pack to get that inbounds pass and get fouled. As Rice said that Curry might have 30 in this half before it's all said and done. He's got 29 as he heads to the line for two. In I, this half, 39 overall. I like his chances. I do too. <laughs> He's got two chances. You know, another thing about this Davidson team, we talked about their games against North Carolina, against Duke, against NC State here, against UCLA, where they had to lead in the first half. You know who they scrimmaged against? The University of Texas. So they go down to Texas to play Rick Barnes' club. Rick Barnes and Bob McKillick were on Eddie Biedenbach's staff at the same time at Davidson. They're really close friends, so they had a chance to work out against, uh, against Texas. So this team has been up against some of the best in the country. That's what the two number one seeds and two number twos. That's, That's not, not bad. bad. That was the fifth foul. That's why we have a delay here, waiting for the sub for Pendergraft. And uh, Gonzaga last year got knocked out by Indiana in the first round. We talked about them going to the Sweet 16 in 06. But <laughs> Tearfully watched his final stretch. This for 40 points on the game. You'll see this you know, back in America's days. Yeah. Okay, but 